Hello everybody and welcome to another Jurassic World Evolution 3 speculation video. So by far the most popular in the series was my update features video and there were a couple features that I did miss out on in that video and I'd like to clear up here and get the last features that I could strain my brain to think of that Evolution 3 could implement and let me know what you think of them so let's get started. So one behavioural addition that I forgot to talk about was climbing. So this is something that is done by particularly the two hybrids, the Scorpius Rex and the Indoraptor. And I would certainly love to see this added into the game as it would make these two dinosaurs more, more unique and potentially even more dangerous for when they get out of their exhibits. Like they can currently climb fences, but imagine you, you're a guest, you're walking down Main Street and the Indoraptor is prowling around it climbs up on a building and follows you along the rooftops and you turn around you see it up on the roof uh, I think that'd be really cool seeing dinosaurs climbing trees and buildings would be a very cool feature and other animals could use it too like the marsupial lion I discussed in my Cenozoic speculation video another behavioral ad addition could be burrowing so there are several small dinosaurs that we currently have in the game and several that we could see like Erectodromius or various others that would use burrows and I think that would be a pretty cool feature for these animals to sort of hide away in a hole while bigger dinosaurs roam around and yeah it would certainly be an interesting feature like <laughs> you got a Carnotaurus chasing after something like a Psittacosaurus that we could potentially see in the game and it just rushes down a hole and the Carnotaurus can't get it I think that would be a pretty cool feature of burrowing I would love to see it Another behaviour I'd love to see would be the sauropods rearing. Now this is a behaviour that isn't really shared among all sauropods, but at least to the Brachiosaurus, the, particularly the Jurassic Park one, it would be a really cool feature to see to really recreate that opening scene to Jurassic Park. I say opening scene. The first time we really see dinosaurs with the Brachiosaurus, I think that would be really cool to see it rock back on its hind legs and get to the real top of the tree. I think that'd be awesome to see. And animals like Diplodocus and Apatosaurus could use it too, as I think Apatosaurus has done it in the franchise. Um, at the end of Dominion, and I think on Dino Tracker, I think it was. But yeah, I think that'd be really cool. Another interesting addition could be the indoor storage of dinosaurs. So something like what the basement of Lockwood Manor had, where you have several cages that you can store dinosaurs in. And I think that would be pretty cool for storing different kinds of dinosaurs in one place and allowing you to properly recreate that Lockwood escape at the end of Fallen Kingdom. I think that would be pretty cool. I've always wanted to properly recreate that scene and I think with an indoor storage building like a Lockwood Manor basement style uh, facility, I think that would be pretty good. That, pretty good? Pretty good. I would love to see it. Something else that I think could spice up the lagoons in particular would be lagoon fences and gates as well. So lagoon fences, the idea behind them would be able to separate bodies of water off from different animals. So you could have an area of a large lagoon for the Mosasaurus and you could have plesiosaurs or ichthyosaurs on another side. I think it would be a really good way to save space and uh, allow these different animals to exist in the same body of water but not able to eat each other and the lagoon gates would be pretty good as well like allowing the ranger team drone to move between the, the two lagoons or more lagoons depending on how many you have and an, a large natural lagoon like the jurassic world one would be a pretty good feature as well but yeah it'd be a lot this gate would allow us to recreate fallen kingdom quite well Speaking of gates, the monorail gate. So we don't actually have access to this in the, the game that we have right now, Jurassic World Evolution 2, yet it has been seen several times in multiple trailers, such as this park management guide that we got, the launch trailer, uh, the Camp Cretaceous trailer. We've seen this so many times, yet we haven't actually been given access to use it on our monorails. I've tried. <laughs> Lord knows I've tried to get this gate working in the game, but it just hasn't happened. But, so Frontier, could you please give us access to this monorail gate in the next game, at least? Please? 
I'd just love to use it. Now here's a more important feature I'd like to talk about. More dynamic and unique escape animations. So the escapes currently are not the most interesting thing for dinosaurs to do, though there are some dinosaurs that climb the fences of course, but why are they always ramming their heads into things or ramming their legs and whole bodies into them if you're a Gallimimus? I think there should be more unique animations for certain dinosaurs, such as the large predators ripping down cable fences like you see in the original Jurassic Park, or a Therizinosaurus slashing through the fence. Sauropods could also use the rearing animation to rock back and then push down fences rather than running into them. With some other species possible for the game, some species could potentially dig and go under the fences depending on the fence type. Maybe some of the small animals could potentially watch the gate as they open and run out before they close. This could be a feature that Ornithomimids in particular could utilise and just be a cheeky escape artist. Something seen in the first announcement trailer for Evolution 2 was pterosaurs perching on branches. So this was when the pteranodon sort of mimics a bird at the start of the trailer. I would love to see this, like if we had large dead trees that we could place and pterosaurs could perch on them and as they take off the branch sort of uh, wobbles in response. I think that would be a really cool feature and allow us to create dynamic landscapes for the pterosaurs to interact with and we could potentially, potentially excuse me, recreate the ending shot of the Lost World where the pteranodon lands down on the branch and does its little roar. And speaking of that Tyrandon, we need a Lost World Tyrandon variant. <laughs> this is something else that we've seen in trailers, but I've never seen in the game myself. Now, sauropods, even though they are prehistoric and the paleoflora does seem more appropriate for them to feed from, there shouldn't be anything stopping them from feeding on the natural trees that you see growing around them. I would certainly love to see the Brachiosaurus able to feed from pine trees and perhaps also feed on other kinds of trees that the game would have. So there was, there was this one shot in particularly the late Cretaceous Packs launch trailer where the Alamosaurus is feeding from I think a maple tree or an elm and I tried to recreate that but the Alamosaurus starved to death and died, it didn't feed from the tree once. So seeing sauropods actually feed from trees would be a pretty cool feature. Something else from the announcement trailer, announcement trailer is coming through strong here. Animals jumping on and interacting with rocks and logs. So I think this would be pretty cool as a dynamic feature for particularly chasers. So this was seen in the distance of the announcement trailer for Evolution 2 when a Coelophysis jumped on the log. And uh, I think that would be pretty cool. So say uh, you're being a, a guest is being chased by raptors or something, or a Gallimimus is being chased by raptors. It jumps over the log and the raptor follows suit. Right, and potentially you could even have animations where a Gallimimus is being chased by a much larger predator like a T-Rex. And Gallimimus jumps over the log, but T-Rex stomps down and breaks the log. I think that would be a pretty cool feature to recreate certain scenes. And I think it was in the first Jurassic Park when the Jeep's being chased by the T-Rex. That, that Rexy smashed through a fallen tree. I think that'd be pretty cool to see added into the game as well, like these large uh, dead trees just hanging over paths or something. I think that'd be pretty cool to recreate that scene with. So basically, add this jumping on and interacting with rocks and logs animations, but also more rock and log varieties, as we didn't even get this log <laughs> that's in the announcement trailer in the game. So I'd certainly love to see it. Another feature would be larger aviaries. This is something that I personally have complained about. Well, Quetzalcoatlus can't really fly that high and really seems confined to the height that the aviaries are currently at. If we could get either a large aviary version or just the big Jurassic World aviary as a separate attraction, I think that would be a much more appropriate aviary for the Quetzalcoatlus to be released into. Potentially even the concept art of the Jurassic Park Avery could be used in inspiration for this. And since it's a Jurassic World Avery, potentially allowing dinosaurs to break into them when they're on a ranch rampage, I think that would be a cool feature to see as well. And potentially even when pterosaurs attack a helicopter above the Avery, the helicopter could potentially crash into it. I don't know. 
whether that's too violent, I don't know, but uh, it would be cool nonetheless. Something I think I touched on in the last video was multi-species fights. So this is something that's been seen in particularly the Jurassic World trilogy where three dinosaurs have fought one another. So in Dominion you had the Therry and the T-Rex versus the Giga. Although in this concept art this was when they were considering Acrocanthosaurus. And in Jurassic World of course you had Blue, the Velociraptor and Rexy team up on the Indominus. These would be really cool fights to recreate in the game and you could potentially even do it for some other animals. I think a new three species fight was actually in Chaos Theory where Big E.T., the Allosaurus, um, both of them are fighting the Atrociraptors. I think that would be a pretty cool feature, although they, they certainly weren't on a side or anything, they were all fighting for each other, <laughs> each other's purposes. But uh, yeah, these, this would be a pretty cool feature to see. Something that has been mentioned to me every now and then is the addition of more modern animals. So given that we're in a more open world, where are all the animals that live in it? So in particularly African and North American maps, we could see many large animals like brown bears, bison, wildebeest and zebras all living on the maps and you could potentially see dinosaurs interact with them. I think that would be really cool to see, like say you're building a park in Africa and uh, you're, you've got an escape carnivore and it goes to chase the zebras or the wildebeest and yeah, I think that would be pretty cool and maybe even a bear <laughs> tackle a small predator to the ground or something. I think that would be pretty cool to see in the game modern animals interacting with prehistoric life. Now we did get benches and bins, but guests don't really use them. So I think implementing a feature like we see in the Planet games, Planet Coaster and Planet Zoo, where guests actually do sit on benches and fill up bins, I think that'd be a pretty cool feature and would lean into one of the features I'll talk, to, talk about later. Another cool feature would be more decorative plant options. So bamboo, reeds, lily pads, like Amazonian water lilies and mangrove trees. These different plants would add a great new atmosphere to the game, and there was a bamboo forest on Isla Nublar anyway. And I think reeds would be a great uh, sort of liner to water bodies, and mangrove trees too. And these large water lilies would be great to decorate the park with. And I think there were some large water lilies in the pond in front of Jurassic Park, can't quite recall. This is something that has also been pointed out to me. So when animals in Jurassic World Evolution 2 get a serious injury, like a major fracture or a broken horn or claw, you can't actually see that in the game unless you have the Demon Carnotaurus skin from the Malta expansion. But seeing an animal with an injury like a burn or a broken horn, it should become visible on the animal. And also, uh, an animal gets a major fracture, that animal could potentially be limping. It, it would give more credence and realism to the fact that this animal is seriously injured. And I don't know if this is too far, but they could even go as far as an animal actually actively losing blood from an injury like a claw mark or a puncture wound. And I think it would just give more uh, realism to the animals as living creatures. It's like these animals are losing blood and you need to tend to this animal quickly or it's going to die of blood loss. Or this animal has been in a certain fight and lost a horn something like that like you could see a triceratops with a broken horn or be able to create your own demon carnotaurus where it's missing a horn and it's got a claw mark on its face that sort of thing back to these two dinosaurs rexy and the demon carnotaurus were just on the previous slide but direct species competition and establishment of dominance so this is particularly for carnivores so allowing for a dinosaur hierarchy to be established in an ecosystem. So with a top predator and subordinates like the Carnotaurus to the T-Rex. So these would be sort of the more, the, the carnivores that are gutsy enough to try and steal food from the top predator, but not actually try and overpower or battle to the death that dominant animal. So that sort of feature would be pretty good where a Carnotaurus doesn't try and fight the T-Rex, instead just tries to steal its meal and then it's put in its place. I think that would be really cool to see Rexy uh, actually put dinosaurs in their place. And proper scavenging behaviors would be pretty cool too. 
with small predators specifically targeting and stealing from the carcass, rather than challenging the owner of the carcass that's already there. So say, T-Rex has brought down Triceratops and Carnotaurus is watching from the bushes. It's, it runs in, steals a piece of meat and then runs off, not trying to challenge that T-Rex for the carcass. So I think that'd be pretty cool to see giving giving these animals a less reason to just kill each other all the time and more just like get some food then retreat. Small dinosaurs picking large dinosaurs teeth is something that was only recently seen in Jurassic World Dominion and I think this would be a really cool feature to see Morris and Trepidus picking between the teeth of the Giganotosaurus getting the scraps of its last meal that sort of thing I think that'd be pretty cool and you could potentially have many of these scavenging little dinosaurs living with your large predators and the large predators will just open their mouths for them and they'll just pick their teeth. Sort of like cleaner rats cleaning the teeth of sharks and other large fish. This is something that we saw in Dominion only very briefly, but this is pterosaurs perching on large sauropods. Now, I don't know whether this was a full-sized Pteranodon or a particularly small one compared to this Dreadnoughtus, but nonetheless, I would really love to see this, as there, there would be times in prehistory when these smaller flying animals would have perched on the, on the bodies of these larger dinosaurs, sort of hitching a ride almost. You see this with birds all the time, like cattle egrets on the backs of elephants and stuff like that. I think this would be a pretty cool feature. I can't see the Quetzalcoatlus or Hatsugoptrix really doing it, but many of the smaller pterosaurs like Dimorphodon and Pteranodon and more of those small to medium pterosaur ranges actually exhibiting this behavior. Specialized and smaller exhibits would be pretty cool features as well, particularly for many of the species I discussed in my other species speculation video, where I brought up stuff like Arthropleura, many Carboniferous insects, as well as amphibians. These animals wouldn't necessarily function well in the open habitats we currently have and wouldn't be very close to look at for many of the guests. So allowing us to have these specialized small exhibits for these particular animals would be pretty cool. Sort of like a mini aviary for the Microraptor and smaller dino birds and maybe a glass house for the Carboniferous insects and a terrarium for any of the amphibians that we'd, that we'd likely have. Although some of the amphibians, given their size, would be able to fit in the larger exhibits. And would all these animals would be able to interact in the outer world. But if you're trying to build a realistic park setting, having these kind of exhibits as an option would be pretty good. Something that has been talked about quite a lot is allowing us to have the ability to generate accurate looking species. So for each animal that we have in the game, we could have an accurate variant. This is something that people particularly wanted for the Tarbosaurus, but that evidently did not happen. We, we've still got the Camp Cretaceous Tarbosaurus, which is canonically accurate, but people would have really liked to see an accurate Tarbosaurus as well. And other animals where the accurate version is so different to the one that we see in the films, like that of a Velociraptor or a Trociraptor or the Giganotosaurus as well. Having accurate versions as options would be pretty good, and the same for Dilophosaurus as well. Like how, being able to have that as an option, I think would be pretty good for the game. Something that has occasionally been brought up is improving the guess. So this is something that Operation Genesis had. So in Operation Genesis, guests actually had the specific dinosaurs they wanted to see, they also had names and even their own unique interests or where they're from and stuff like that. Allowing your guests to have more of a personality and an identity so that you can identify that guest in the park. And if a dinosaur escapes, that guest could appear as the one being potentially hunted and you're just like, oh no, not John or whatever. And <laughs> because you, you actually can check the guest, check their profile and um, I think that would be very interesting. It would give the guests greater depth and make them more fun for the players to interact with, rather than the shallow bodies walking through your park. Would, and giving them more dynamic behaviours like those seen the guests from Frontiers, Plant Coaster and Plant Zoo would be very cool and make them more lively. Now this is a feature I was discussing earlier, so with the bins and stuff they could potentially be emptied by new unique staff members so caretakers and stuff like that this is something that prehistoric kingdoms gradually working 
towards, but Plan Zoo already has. So having unique staff members like keepers, veterinarians, all that sort of stuff would be a great step in the right direction for giving the game deeper and richer management. Seeing different ways that the keepers would service animal exhibits or how vets can monitor the animals in the field. It's like your MVU pulls up to, to your dinosaur and the guest actually, uh, the guest, the vet actually steps out of the truck and goes over to the animal and monitor and like visually observes its injuries. Um, security guards too would be great to place around the park so ensuring guests don't go where they shouldn't and I can even pay the way for bad guests like what Plan Zoo has where park, park property can sometimes be vandalized and security guards would step in and deal with the situation. I think that would be pretty cool to add more depth as well. There could be all sorts of staff members that can give the game a deeper, richer atmosphere. So have rangers, have uh, park guides, keepers, educators, that sort of thing. I think that would be really cool to see in the game and like even interacting with your staff. Like with the sciences currently, it's a sort of, it's a shallow way of how it can go. So they, so allowing what Prehistoric Kingdom is currently doing where they're working on some kind of text chain between you as the park manager and the staff in your park. I think that would be really cool to allow you to interact with the people working for you in your Jurassic Worlds. Now that is one big pile of dinosaur waste. So this is something that Prehistoric Kingdom has and what Jurassic World Evolution 2 does not. Dinosaurs actually leaving little presents around. <laughs> so we, this has been in the franchise since the first movie and uh, yeah. <laughs> Allowing you to see your dinosaurs actually poop would be a more realistic feature to add in as currently the dinosaurs are some of the cleanest animals you could ever see. Like, if the, if the dinosaurs in Jurassic World Evolution 2 were in a modern zoo, keepers would be beside themselves. They'd be like, wow, they're so behaved and so well trained and such. No, <laughs> these dinosaurs should just um, do their thing and... If we do get these new staff members, they could come in and clean up the mess or put it in large piles like something that Ian Malcolm would witness. <laughs> something I did touch on in the last game in the last video was new types of fences. So I was going on about like wooden fences and stuff like that, but there could even be these smaller leveled fences. So fences that are lower to the ground. And sort of either for like bordering the paths or for smaller dinosaurs. So these sort of chain link fences and wooden fences with rope in between. That sort of thing would be pretty cool to see in the game. Or even adjusting the height of fences yourself. But uh, another thing would be null paths and gravel paths and stuff like that. Having a natural path would be a, a great feature to see in the game. Rather than always having to have a path that's either paid over, <laughs> paved, um paved over or has got concrete and stuff like that having a natural path is something that plant zoo didn't have for a while although it did have null paths but not like the uh borderless ones if we had those those would be really good as well some jurassic world decorations would be great features as well such as like a park map or the archways and walls that sort of thing and various other film accurate decorations too like i think that and film accurate amenities that would be great to see so some of the attractions that were in the previous game such as the bar or the gift shop those sort of buildings or at least adding the pieces that were part of those buildings as options to your amenities with those would be great to see something else i've wanted to see for a while is underground maintenance tunnels so these were introduced in fallen kingdom and camp cretaceous where you've got this underground catacombs of different tunnels and passageways that connect up the park. So you could potentially add this into your Jurassic World where you've connected up these different parts of your park with an opening that leads into the, into the overworld but ranger teams can use this to get around the parks much quicker. And this would certainly allow them to deal with situations on a hell of a lot quicker. More skeletons and statue displays would be very cool as well, giving each species a statue and a skeleton, whether of its movie version or of a uh, accurate version would be pretty cool features to add. 
seeing the skeletons of dinosaurs from the past and also statues of the dinosaurs that you've recreated would be really cool decorations to see placed around the park. Right now we've got a, a selection of I think three skeletons. We have the one of the Alamosaurus and the T-Rex from Jurassic Park and then the Spinosaurus from Jurassic World. But seeing them all for each of these dinosaurs would be really cool. Sea stacks and underwater rock formations would be other really cool features to see added to the game. Sea stacks could almost double for as a marine decoration but also as an aviary decoration. Seeing pterosaurs perch up on the ledges and stuff, giving them a sort of coastal atmosphere to relive. And the underwater rock formations such as large caves and like archways, that sort of thing would be really cool to see to really liven up the lagoons. If you think kelp is really good, Rock formations can add a lot as well, like even adding little trenches and gorges in your lagoons. Those would be really cool to see. Something else I'd love to see would be dinosaurs having the ability to destroy buildings and go inside buildings. And yeah, <laughs> it would make them somewhat of more, a, a bit more of a dangerous animal in your park. So say they're chasing a guest and then they go inside the building. I think that would be really cool, and like the larger dinosaurs, uh, the buildings could be collateral damage of their fights like they were in Jurassic World, and could even be used by one of the dinosaurs in the fight as a, a, as a weapon, using its terrain to its advantage, like we saw with Rexy fighting the Indominus Rex. But both these features would be really cool and would allow us to recreate certain scenes like, say, the Velociraptors enter one of your restaurants, and they're hopping up on the tables and there's people hiding behind and you can probably recreate Jurassic Park. Back on the topic of the Indoraptor and the Scorpius Rex, I think giving the Indoraptor the ability to gallop while chasing down prey would be a bit more... It, it, it would look more aggressive and intimidating than its current running animation where it runs on two legs. I think the Indoraptor galloping down the hall in Fallen Kingdom really solidifies why giving the Indoraptor the ability to gallop and make it a more intimidating presence. And Scorpius Rex as well should be given quadrupedal movement too. So, I mean, Indoraptor already does have some, but Scorpius Rex was seen several times in, in throughout its screen time in Camp Cretaceous, actually moving much like the Indoraptor on all fours, like when it corners Ben and Darius at the end of one of the episodes. I think it's the episode before they before the two Scorpius Rexes get uh, crushed by the visitor center. It's at the start of that one where it crawls towards ba um, Darius and Ben. And yeah, give, giving these two hybrids a bit more dynamic behaviors would be pretty good as these two, these are two of the most unique hybrids in the franchise. Speaking of unique species, the swimming feature I discussed last time, I wanted to clarify on two species giving swimming to the Pyroraptor and Dimetrodon in Dominion. Even though it's only for a split second, you do see the Dimetrodon swimming in the Amber Mine. And uh, the Pyroraptor, of course, spent a lot of its screen time swimming under the ice. So giving the Pyroraptor the ability to swim, of course you don't have to provide it with deep water if you weren't a real, a real fan of the Pyroraptor doing that, but at least giving players the option to have a swimming Pyroraptor would be good. And on the subject of raptors, I think the Utah raptor should be given the opportunity to pack hunt. Well, the ability to pack hunt, really. Because I was really surprised when it was <laughs> we found out that the Utah raptor actually cannot pack hunt in the game. So I feel like that should be added in, as it would be really cool to see a pack of Utah raptors taking on a Tyrannosaurus or something like that. G giving it that ability would be pretty good. And Spinoraptor could potentially be given pack hunting abilities. I don't know, those toe claws could come in handy. But uh, either way, these two would be pretty good. Now, this feature is sort of the, having a Cenozoic hatchery. So, Cenozoic creatures are tricky for two reasons. One, most people don't really think they belong in the franchise. And two is, how are you going to create them? Most of these animals if not all the animals, don't really hatch from eggs. Okay, the birds do, but the mammals don't, as I didn't really put any monotremes up for grabs. Though there were a giant echidna and giant platypus back in the day. But Cenozoic hatcheries would be interesting. So the way I've thought that they could reproduce 
the Cenozoic animals would be in like an artificial womb situation. So like you have the embryo and it grows up in an artificial womb and then you then it's given birth to and uh, then it's bred and then released down to the park. Well, bred, raised and released down to the park. It, it's sort of a cleaner m method in comparison to like surrogate mothers. So using modern animal equivalents to give birth to certain animals. I think this, this strategy would be a lot better <laughs> in terms of like adding these sort of animals giving it allowing us to create these animals in a in a clean way that doesn't involve us having to impregnate living animals to do it the last feature i'd like to talk about is allowing us in first person mode to actually go inside buildings seeing the interiors and interact with it like say if we entered the visitor center we're able to see that center um pedestal where the the holograms are generated and you can change the hologram based on your preference you can go up the stairs onto the decks and look at the um, different dinosaur information you can go into the lab and look at the incubating eggs that sort of thing would be really cool to see and allow us to fully live out our jurassic park dreams and allow us to see the park in every way imaginable Good lord, my voice is sore after that. <laughs> Those were a lot of features. And I think that's every feature I could possibly think of, as well as the ones from the previous video. So if you haven't seen that video already, I do recommend it. There are a lot of cool features I put in that one. And there's a hell of a lot that were in this one as well. But yeah, let me know if there are any more features. I'm not doing another one of these. Um, but... Uh, yeah, let, let me know if there's any other features that you think I missed and I should add in maybe like a community post or something because I could not think of any other features. I was really straining my brain for this video. But uh, yeah, let me know what your favorite feature from this video was and what your, let's say, top 10 features overall would be to add to Jurassic World Evolution 3, whether they be game changing or just new additions to a roster or something like that. But yeah. Let me know if you enjoyed this video in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, I would appreciate the like and subscribe if you would love to. And I would certainly appreciate it too. And as for now, I guess I'll see you all in the next video. Bye bye.